Hey everyone, this video will be a quick look tutorial where we take a look at the Obsidian filter section in Nano Studio 2. So I'll briefly describe each filter and show you the types of sounds you can expect out of them and demo some patches that I find representative of that. So with that out of the way, let's just jump right in. All right, so we got a init patch here just to start from scratch. And probably the most common filter type you're gonna end up using is low pass filter. Obviously, low pass filter is really good for, you know, creating nice sweep sounds where you can cut off the high frequency content. Not, not a whole lot to say about the low pass filter other than you can tweak the resonance pretty high and use the drive to either drive that resonance or in the absence of resonance, really drive the saturation to try to get a more analog sound out of the filter. And by switching from uh, 12 dB to 24 dB filter, you just kind of get a deeper sound. Sometimes though it takes too much edge off, so you really have to just determine what your sound you're going for and, and pick one of these two different LP types accordingly. And also should briefly mention key track. This basically it does a very similar thing to what you find over here in the filter uh, scaling where basically it just tapers down the higher notes when you track it this way. See how it tapers it down? Or the opposite way on the bass end tapers that down. So you can achieve that this way too if you use the filter EMV. Key track negative, key track positive. It should pretty much have a similar function, although you have a little bit more control over the uh, scaling here in the filter E and V. All right, moving on to band pass. As you can see here, band pass, it passes the band frequency, the mid frequencies. So the, the main use for the band pass, I find, or the way I like to use it, is to sort of introduce a kind of grittiness, screechiness, a bit of noise into the mix. As you can hear with the resonance on that and the drive all the way up. You can just make that a little bit more pronounced with the 6 dB versus 12 dB. The high pass, of course, just passes the high frequencies. I guess mainly you'd be using this filter for sounds where you want to just cut out the bass for whatever reason. Uh, maybe you're trying to make a hi-hat or a high-frequency percussion sound. Those are a few obvious cases, but you can also use it for these synth-type screeching sounds. Just a different flavor. Notch. Notch is basically like a deep scooping EQ, basically, where wherever you have this scoop here, it just pretty much completely filters out those frequencies. And the resonance knob basically just handles the uh, depth of that effect. Notch can have an interesting effect on some basses, I found, or uh, it's almost like you can use it as a phaser, as you can hear by mo modulating the cutoff. You can definitely create some interesting effects with that. Moving to the EQ. The EQ is pretty much exactly as you'd expect it to be. You have a peak variant where you can do a single band EQ basically and sweep that. This is not like a filter. It doesn't really have resonance. That just controls the band. Although it can sound filtered if you use it that way. But most of the time you'll be using EQ much the same way you'd use any EQ, right? We have the formant here, which formant being uh, trying to replicate the the way that vocal cords vibrate in the human voice. So you can create all sorts of almost like talking sounds using this, uh, or you can even change the character of a synth um, by using a formant filter. You have male and female variants to slightly change that that effect. Wow. 
We have the comb filter, which I showed you guys in the last video, a sort of special case usage of the comb filter uh, in creating physical modeled synth sounds. If you wanna learn how to use that, uh, just go to that video, the link is in the description. But the other typical way you might use a comb filter is for uh, dissonance, sort of the filter sound and make it maybe a little bit more dissonant. See how it introduces that dissonance there. You can use the mix, which is a very handy knob here, to decrease the effect if it's a little too dissonant, but you otherwise like the flavor that it that it introduces. And of course, the cue or the resonance affects the depth of that effect. And the wave shaper here, this is basically an all-purpose distortion filter. So you got these, all these different variants. You have tube, which is sort of like, you know, a tube saturation type sound. And the cutoff basically becomes mix in this case. It can be subtle in some cases. I think because this is already a harsh saw wave, it's probably a little bit more subtle than in other cases. You have a so-called soft filter which sort of, I guess, pushes it into more of like a square wave territory. And a more harsh variant of that, it's hard, just pushes it a little bit harder. You get a very distorted, sort of like electric guitar distortion with this. Enhance is basically, it's very subtle, as its name suggests. You, you can maybe just add a little bit of saturation slash distortion as an enhancement to a sound just to maybe bring out some overtones sign is interesting because it can be kind of a mangling distortion sound which as you hear there it almost gives an organ type distortion and try is just another flavor of this sometimes a little bit more harsher of course you can modulate this drive here and of course, we have lo-fi, or in other words, bit crush. Where you can effectively reduce the resolution of a sound. And again, you can use that mix knob to sort of mix the clean signal with the bit crush signal. Of course, the real power with these filters is sort of how you combine and mix and match them to create a unique sound. You can maybe put a bit crush in filter one, and maybe it's got too much edge, but introduces all these high overtones, and then filter that with a low pass in filter two, uh, in which case you would probably do series. Or you can do parallel, where you split them up, so one oscillator goes into the bit crush, another oscillator goes into uh, a comb filter, or, or the low pass, or whatever you want. It, you know, combined, mixed and matched, and with envelopes and LFOs, you can create pretty much anything you can think of. All right, so that's a little quick look at the Obsidian filters, and uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.